Okay, so um, we've got some seriously cool research you sent over about using yeast to make psilocybin. Yeah. The psychedelic compound in magic mushrooms. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fascinating area of yeah. study. And it really could change how we think about psychedelics in medicine, you know? Yeah. The whole idea of using yeast, like what we use to bake bread to create psilocybin. Right. That's wild. So first off, why even go through all this trouble? Why not just stick with the mushrooms themselves? Well, imagine you're a scientist and you're trying to study the effects of psilocybin. Okay. You want to be absolutely sure that each dose is consistent, pure. Mm -hmm. But with naturally occurring psilocybin, that's really difficult to do. Right. The concentration can vary a lot from mushroom to mushroom. Yeah. And there's always a risk of contamination. So it's like the difference between, like, I'm thinking, like, gathering wild herbs for a tea. Right. Which, you know, might have slightly different effects every time versus using a tea bag from the store. It, you be... know exactly what you're getting with that tea bag. And that level of precision is really crucial when we're talking about something that could be used as medicine. Okay, so this yeast method could be a game changer. It could. So, like, what's the big difference then? Think about it this way. With yeast, scientists can cultivate psilocybin in a very controlled environment. Okay. Kind of like a microscopic factory. Huh. They can fine tune the process to produce a pure, standardized form of psilocybin with consistent dosing every time. Wow. So, if I'm understanding this right, we could go from having these somewhat unpredictable mushrooms to something as standardized as like an aspirin? That's the idea. Wow. And this standardization is really essential for a lot of reasons, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to research and getting psilocybin approved for medical use. Which makes sense because then you've got to be able to tell the FDA exactly what you're working with. Absolutely. Right. This research is important because it could pave the way for psilocybin to be rigorously studied and potentially approved as a treatment oh, wow. for certain conditions. So it sounds like this research could be a major win for scientists studying psilocybin. It could. So, like, what's the big deal about having this, like, standardized form for research? Well, for one, it lets researchers study the effects of psilocybin um, with a level of precision that just hasn't been possible before. Okay. They can control the dosage down to the milligram and make sure that every participant in a study is receiving the same amount. Right. This level of accuracy is really, really crucial for understanding, like, how psilocybin works and how it might be used therapeutically. That makes sense. You don't want to be like guessing about dosages when you're dealing with something as like powerful as psychedelics. Exactly. And this precision is also really important for getting psilocybin through the FDA approval process. Oh, right. Yeah. The FDA needs to see clear, reliable data on a drug's safety and efficacy before they'll even consider approving it for medical use. So this yeast-based method could be the key to like un unlocking psilocybin's full potential as a medicine? It could be a huge step in that direction. You see, to get a drug FDA approved, it needs to go through a series of clinical trials. Right. And those trials require a lot of things. Yeah. One of the biggest hurdles is showing that the drug can be produced consistently and safely mm -hmm. with a very specific profile every time. Right. And that's exactly what this yeast-based method offers. So it's like this research is laying the groundwork for like a whole new era of psychedelic medicine almost. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Wow. And, you know, this technology doesn't just stop at psilocybin. Okay. The same techniques could be used to produce other psychedelic compounds found in nature. Oh, really? Now that you mention it, I do remember reading something about that in the research, about how this yeast-based approach could be applied to other compounds as well. Yeah. So, like, we could potentially see a whole new wave of psychedelic-based medications, like, down the line. Yeah, it's definitely a possibility. Wow. Imagine a future where doctors could describe, like, precisely dosed capsules of psilocybin or other psychedelic compounds tailored to treat um, specific conditions like depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. PTSD, maybe even addiction. Wow. This research opens the door to exploring those possibilities with a level of scientific rigor that just wasn't possible before. This is like pretty exciting stuff we're talking about, like potentially transforming the way we approach mental health. Absolutely. And, and, and it's not just about developing new medication. OK. It's about changing the conversation around psychedelics altogether. Right. For too long, these substances have been, you know, demonized and misunderstood. Right. It's like people hear the word psychedelic and they immediately think of like the 60s counterculture. Yeah. Not necessarily like 
cutting edge medical treatments. Exactly. Yeah. But this research has the potential to change that. Right. It shows that psychedelics can be studied and understood using the same like rigorous scientific methods as any other potential medicine. Mm -hmm. And that's a powerful message. It seems like we're really on the verge of a major shift in how we view these compounds and how we could potentially like use them. You yeah. Know? When I think about the potential of like psilocybin therapy, one thing that comes to mind is like the idea of personalized medicine. Right. So could this yeast-based production method help tailor these treatments to individual needs even more effectively? That's a great question. And the answer is potentially yes. Okay. Um, right now, even in clinical trials, finding that optimal dose for each person, yeah, it can be a bit of a trial and error process. That makes sense. Every Everybody's brain chemistry is different. Exactly. So um, imagine a future where maybe with the help of genetic testing or other biomarkers, doctors could pinpoint the exact dose of psilocybin. Wow. That would be most effective for a particular patient. Okay. This yeast-based production method could make that level of personalized medicine a reality. That would be incredible. Almost like having a psilocybin prescription tailored just for you. Exactly. So it feels like we're not just talking about new medications, but like a whole new paradigm for treating mental health conditions. I think that's right. Yeah. The current model often relies on just treating symptoms with medication, you know, kind of ongoing. Yeah. But psychedelics, especially when you pair them with therapy, right, have shown the potential to create like lasting change at a deeper level. It's not just about like masking the problem, but actually addressing like the root cause. Precisely. And if we can produce these compounds in a safe, standardized, scalable way, yeah. it could make these kinds of treatments much more accessible to people. Right. This research has the potential to really revolutionize how we approach mental health care. So to wrap this up, we've gone from like magic mushrooms found in nature mm. to potentially growing standardized medicine in a lab. Yeah. Like the possibilities are truly mind boggling. It's a really exciting time to be in this field. And um, yeah. it's important to remember that this research is still ongoing. There's a lot more to learn. Right. But the potential is huge. It certainly feels like we're at a turning point here. You know, if this research pans out, it could have a ripple effect throughout like all of medicine opening up entirely new avenues for treatment yeah. and really like challenging our preconceived notions about psychedelics. Absolutely. It's definitely something to think about.